All right, hey, Shalom, first and foremost, giving our honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Rikah HaKudash, the honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the Lord's elect. All right, this is Brother Yashai, part of Men of Valley, South Carolina. And this lesson is going to be basically a World War III update, um, you know, on the Russia and the Ukraine uh, um, conflicts, okay? Uh, brother's been in the, in the chats. Um, and you know, just been staying up on, um, been staying abreast on the articles and, uh, the updates that are coming out and, um, you know, Hey, this is a, um, hell of a time that we're in, man. You know, we're on the verge of world war three. We're on the cusp of world war three and the Lord is stirring everything up. Um, you know, ultimately to, uh, in, you know, uh, this current world and its system. All right. Uh, with a with a big shebang, man, <laughs> you know, and and them thermonuclear missiles are gonna be part of it, you know. So, uh, just to get into this, man, um, this is a uh, CNN, and as you can see, February the fourteenth. All right, uh, so this is very recent. The latest on the Ukraine Russia border crisis. All right, where things stand, U.S. officials are warning Russia could launch an invasion of Ukraine as soon as this week, but they are ho still holding out hope that diplomacy can prevail okay now um you know just really quick uh russia and the ukraine okay have been at odds uh, uh you know ever since around um the ukraine left the ussr uh in 1991 august uh 24th to be exact 1991 so you know they broke off and since then you know um of uh, 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 Russia's uh, leader Vladimir Putin, okay, uh, you know, has uh, been trying to get them back, um, and has you know uh, basically felt some type of way about you know the Ukraine leaving, and, and the Ukraine wasn't um, the, the only um, uh, so-called state to break off or country to break off of the USSR. You know, uh, I believe Crimea, and you know just. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the um, various other countries that, that formed the USSR, you know, uh, uh, broke off. All right. But right now we're um, talking about and we're centering on the Ukraine and uh, the Ukraine. Uh, the U.S. has relations with Ukraine. OK, so this thing can play out in multiple different ways. But basically, this is an act of war if. You know, um, Russia invades Ukraine because then the U.S. will have to step in. OK. And even if they don't step in and if they don't step in, OK, they're going to break the uh, so-called amicable agreement that, that, that the Ukraine has, man, with the U.S. And thus, you know, hey, uh, uh, the Ukraine might just um, join back with Russia and these other states. Uh, I mean, uh, might might follow suit. And there you go. The USSR uh, is, is uh, back together again, man. Scriptures say um, the, the Lord is going to put a hook in the jaws of the bear. The bear represents Russia, man. It's going to uh, he's going to put a hook in their jaw in, in their in, uh, in his jaws, you know, uh, symbolizing and bringing them back to, you know, the uh, USSR state of I mean, the USSR mind state uh, that they was in, man. OK, during the, uh, the Cold War, you know, and hey, Gog, Gog and Magog is a, is, a, is a vast land. Uh, I believe I read somewhere where um, the USSR or like uh, uh, Russia and, you know, a uh, uh, few of the countries I just named and then uh, um, various others amassed for about one eighth of like the whole earth or uh, like the whole the the, uh, um, um, the land mass. OK, um, either just over there in the east or I believe it's basically, yeah, because, I mean, over here you got uh, the, you know, North, Central, South America, um, um, Canada, you know what I'm saying, uh, Alaska. Well, you know, yeah, so, yeah, pretty much it was, uh, and, and um, don't quote me on that, but it's ba it basically they, they took up or stood for a, a large percentage of the earth, man. Okay, and don't be simple. Not the earth, including the seas, but the land, the uh, 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 you know, um, the lands of the earth, man. So it was a big deal. And then 
you know, once uh, the, if they come back, you know, in that USSR mode, hey, it's going to be a formidable. Well, it's going to be a, it's not even going to be fair to loyal America, man. You know, the scriptures also talk about how the earth, the hammer of the earth has been broken, which represents America and them losing power, uh, losing uh, their position as the superpower of the whole earth, man. Okay. And Russia is going to play a big part in these World War Three. All right. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken announced that the U.S. has closed its embassy in uh, Kiev, Kiev and re relocating remaining diplomatic personnel to the western city and leave. Uh, President Biden spoke with Russia's Vladimir Putin and Ukraine's uh, Vladimir Zelensky over the weekend, but there was no major breakthroughs. Germany's chancellor met with Zelensky in Kiev today and in ongoing dis de escalation efforts. So there you go. You know what I'm saying? And, and this thing is, this thing is heating up, you know. So like I said, it can turn any way, man. Um, you know, uh this is wars and rumors of wars, man. All right. So Ukraine can either, you know, um, fight and, you know, Russia uh, ends up taking them over and, and, and reclaiming them back to the USSR. All right. Or America has to step in and do do something. And that's going to basically start um, a war uh, between uh, them, their allies. OK. And, and Russia. OK. And this is all in, in the scriptures, man. So without further ado. Let's get into the scriptures, man. All right, this is the book of uh, I was just on. This is the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-four and verse six. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So there you go. We're hearing of wars and rumors of wars, but hey, the end is not yet. You know, but it, it's it's close. It's on the horizon, man. All right, we can feel it through the spirit that these uh, you know, uh, the end is near. All right, and by this being in the mainstream media. Okay, hey, this is a big deal, and it's showing you that you know the Lord is about to start working, man. Okay, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. All right, that's kingdom, uh, kingdom against kingdom, Russia and America. Okay, and you know the EU, the NATO, and, and all those countries that consist they that you know they consist of. There should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, and these are the beginning of sorrows. So there you go, man. All right, we got hey, these wars and rumors of wars, man. Now. Let's go to the book. I'm not, I don't plan to make this too long. I just have some precepts that I do need to get. All right. This is the book of Revelation chapter 13 and verse two. And the beast, which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as a feet of a bear. Okay. Now, when you go into that, that leopard is talking about the Grecian empire. Okay. You know, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. And that bear represents Russia and the feet is symbolic for the end of a thing, man. Okay. So, when this uh this 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 beast that that John the Revelator is looking at is basically the superpowers or the uh the uh the rulership okay um in time periods okay uh, of the whole of the whole planet Earth man because it started out all right well the, the Grecians really put things into place. After they defeated uh, the Medio Persian Empire, I believe the Medio Per uh, the Medio uh, Persian Empire, okay, Al Alexander the Greek, you know, and um, you know, and, and things went from there, man. Okay, so yeah, man, um, um, you know, uh, the feet or well, the bear uh, is talking about Russia, man. Okay, and Russia has uh, a few other names in the scriptures. Okay, Gog and Magog, okay, being one of them, Ezekiel 38, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. <laughs> so lucky, and I will bring thee forth, and all thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor even a great company with bucklers and shields all of them handling swords so there you go is uh, that is symbolic for war that's war talk warfare okay the horses and the horsemen okay uh it said and, and, and it tells you right there verbatim and i will bring thee forth and all thine army so there you go and, and the lord is setting this thing up man and it's really speeding up persia ethiopia and libya with them 
all of them with shield and helmet there you go um you know warfare you know uh the things that when ancient in ancient days we went to war what we were wearing but like the scriptures say man you know um basically the war of old uh was with uh uh, noise and, 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 um, you know, ah, it, it leaves me right now. Um, but basically this new war is going to be with the uh, fuel of fire, which represents the thermonuclear missiles, man. Okay. Um, six Gomer and all his bands, the house of Targumar of the North quarters and all his bands and many people with the, and Gomer uh, represents Turkey. So all that whole, that, that whole, you know, little landmass right there, man. Okay. Be prepared. And prepare for, uh, be be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are similar to thee, and be thou a guard unto them, guard unto them. Okay. So uh, Russia is going to be the main uh, one of the main players, all right, in, in World War Three. Okay, and, and they um, you know, Russia has always been a problem to not only America but to these other nations, uh, but namely America because uh. It was the reason America basically um they 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 uh falsified the, the moon landing man because there was a thing that was going on uh there was a space race there was a race to see what country uh, or what you know uh, power superpower okay um because Russia is a superpower China and all these different countries can basically get to outer space first and America being America, okay, Babylon the Great, uh, uh, staged the moon landing, okay, to so-called beat Russia in a space race, man. So that's that's something else. I mean, another thing for another day, man. But um, and I'm gonna bring this one up because I I quoted it, and um, yeah. Once, once upon a time, America was the, uh, the superpower of the earth, but it talks about uh, the hammer of the earth being broken. All right, Jeremiah 15 and 22, a sound of battle was in the land and of great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? So there you go. That's why it's that, that you got to read the scriptures in context. I mean, uh, context with, with the text, man. All right, and sometimes the Lord will have it to where... He's telling you who the the aforementioned uh, um, you know verbiage is what the aforementioned, aforementioned verbiage was uh, basically who it pertains to, and in this case it's the hammer. So the hammer is talking about Babylon. And it's not talking about ancient Babylon. All right, what Jeremiah is talking about um, the new modern day Babylon. Okay, uh, uh, the America, America. Okay, Babylon the Great, because. Um, Babylon is still standing, man. Okay. You know, uh, um, yeah, it, it, if I recall uh, correctly, Babylon is basically modern day Iraq. And that's still standing. So this is not talking about, you know, Iraq or that landmass known as Iraq right now, which is ancient Babylon. It's talking about over here, Babylon the Great. Okay. So there, there you go. I have laid a snare for thee, and thou also art uh, taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. Thou art found and also caught because thou hast driven against the Lord. And this is the one this is gonna be the Lord's sacrifice. Okay. This altar, known as America, as the uh elders and apostles always uh, uh um you know always bring out. This is the this is gonna be this uh America or Babylon the Great is basically a big altar, you know. Uh I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. Thou art, art found and also caught because thou art striving against the Lord. The Lord have opened his armory and have brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the of the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, in the land of the Chaldeans. And there you go. This is a, That's another uh, 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 code name for America, the land of the Chaldeans, because a lot of witchcraft uh, goes on over here. But um, let's go to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 13 and uh, hmm. yeah 
this is a uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 7. Well, I'm going to start at 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. All right? I'm talking about the angels, the mighty ones. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of the host muster the host of the battle. So the Lord is uh, uh, putting the spirit on these certain nations to, uh, you know, putting a warlike spirit on them, man. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation destroy the whole land. Those talking about the thermonuclear missiles, man. How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. There sh therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt. Okay. So, amen. The Lord is coming with, um, with, with, with cruel, in, with, uh, you know, uh, 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 crazy judgment. Okay. For, uh, Babylon the great man. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, this goes into, you know, um. You know the, the the destruction or whatnot. Okay, there's gonna be uh, a war in heaven. Okay, there's gonna be a, a war in the heavens. Okay, uh, aka you know the uh, the first heavens. Okay, which is the atmosphere. You know, um, yep, yep, yep. Uh, second edge is thirteen. And be after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of the out of number for from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea and that's talking about Yahweh all right that's sea represents people okay uh he's coming out of a, a vast uh uh well a lot of uh, people coming out of the midst of a lot of people man but behold but i beheld and lo hath he have graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it and that mountain represents a chariot okay but I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven and I could not. So basically it just, um, you know, filled every place where Edris saw looking up. So it was very vast. It was big. Okay. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid and yet there's fight. So that's that's talking about war, war, war World War Three. You know? He's just talking about World War Three, man. Okay. The, the Lord is, is uh, gathering together, you know, the, these nations, okay, for, for World War Three, And Yahweh Shah is going to be the top um, enemy to these, uh, to uh, E and his armies. And um, like I'm going to read, uh, it, they're going to fight. They're going to be so afraid, but yet uh, the Lord's going to put a spirit on them to fight. All right, and after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to do him were so afraid, and yet there was fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. All right, so hey, the, the Lord ain't really going to have to do nothing, man. He's already in his glory. He's, uh, uh, what a king does, man, a king doesn't have to really lift a hand. A king gives out demands and has workers have, uh, you know, the people that he is over to do the work. And that's what Yahusha is going to do, man. He's going to give the commandments for the angels, uh, for the elect, okay? That's going to get those new spiritual bodies, okay? Um, uh, for the, the thermonuclear missiles uh, and everything, you know, he's going to ha have it. He's going to direct everything without having to lift the finger, so to say, man. Okay? And I'm going to wrap it up with this one. I don't know why I went out here. Uh, Revelation. Chapter 11. Uh, let's see. Uh, in verse 14, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Okay? And the scriptures go into uh, accounts the, the uh, describing World War One and World War Two, All right? Um, and also World War Three, which I just uh, read in 2nd Edges 13. And uh, John the Revelation also, so like you had visions of these world wars okay and just because uh it doesn't say world war you know verbatim doesn't mean that that's not talking about it all right the the, the uh, scriptures are very parabolic and very symbolic so you have to really have to do a cockle dash to be able to understand these words man have to understand the, the scriptures okay now um 
yeah, so Revelation 12 and uh Verse 7, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And that's not talking about the third heaven where Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah dwells, man. Okay, this is talking about the, the, the first heaven. Alright, uh, and, and part of the second heaven because, um, you know, the, well, the first heaven, Salakia, okay, um, the atmosphere. You know, because you're going to have missiles exploding in the atmosphere as well and being fired and detonating, you know, in in, in the atmosphere as well. Fighter jets and, and, and whatever. Uh, hey, they, um, they know that they have what a short time, man. OK, like I'm going to skip down and read. All right. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the, the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he know if he have what a short time. And how Bashem Yahweh Shah is speeding things up and showing these devils and not just no um, uh, retired, uh, uh, you know, army man or some damn Joe Smo that drives an F-150 and has an American flag hanging in front of his uh, 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 house. Now, this is talking about the high level elites. And, you know, he's he's showing them signs that, you know, their their uh, rulership is over. And we also are telling them through through the, the Holy Spirit that their uh, time to reign is over, man. Okay? Through the scriptures. We're showing them that, you know, the Lord is, is doing this because of this, doing that because of that. All right? And ultimately, it's to, uh, uh, for the downfall, you know, of your, your, your society. Okay? So that's it. I mean, I'm going to give our honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah Bashim, Rakah Gudash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders, the great millstone. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the Lord's elect. You know, hopefully that was edifying. Until next time, Shalom.